A couple of weeks ago, I'm guesting on the iFriends podcast, and one of the stories Jake tosses out there is about this robot dog that Sony's making. You might have seen it. It's fucking adorable. And among the features they're trying to build into it is the ability to relay vital health information about elderly people to their families and or doctors. So that's the story we're talking about. And one of the other dudes on the panel says, I don't know, this kind of reminds me of that one Black Mirror episode. And then we all have a laugh at the Sony Abo coming to kill us all. But think about this. Our cultural fear of technology is so profound that when a group of science-loving secularists get together and talk about a robot puppy that helps grandma if she falls down, something that could just as well have been a hyperbolic example of harmlessness, it only takes a few minutes for somebody to bring up the possibility that it's going to kill us all. And look, I'm not trying to disparage my fellow panelist here. It's a comedy show. He's a comedian. He was exploring a comedic angle. But the fact that we even get the joke there betrays a bizarre cultural acceptance of this dark side of technology thing, right? Our fiction is saturated with it. Hell, our nonfiction is saturated with it. There are plenty of authors out there making a living warning us about the dark side of the internet or social media or cell phones or video games or automation or whatever the tech du jour is. Meanwhile, while these professional doom criers desperately search for a boogeyman under every microchip, what does technology actually do? It feeds our hungry. It cures our diseases. It lengthens our lives. It connects us to ever more disparate parts of the world. It eradicates mundane tasks. It keeps us entertained during those ones that it couldn't eradicate yet. I mean, I'm not saying there are no dark sides to all this stuff, but how often do we temper that with all the good shit it does? I mean, other than in our day-to-day -day choices, because sure, we all agree that there are dark sides to a lot of tech, but with the exception of Luddites and Zealots, we don't choose to do without it. I mean, you're a pretty safe statement when your audience is podcast listeners, but the point remains valid. Even recognizing the harms of, say, social media, very few of us would elect to do without it, not because we're weak and addicted, but because the ability to stay in contact with your family and meet and communicate with people from other parts of the world is valuable enough to offset the problems. And I'm not saying religion created this worldview, and I'm also not saying it didn't, but damn, has it benefited from it. See, the alternative to hyping the shadow of maladies cast by the beacon of science is admitting that one of the worldviews is just clearly better than all the other ones. I mean, think for a second about how badass you're going to seem to your great-grandchildren. Okay, they're going to grow up in a world of self-driving cars. Then they're going to see videos and marvel at the sheer courage and fortitude it must have taken to get into a half-ton box of steel, then manually steer it through other steel boxes weighing upward of 30 tons at 70 miles per hour with nothing keeping you alive but a, a flexible strap and a bag of air. Right To us, that's just driving a car, but to them, it'll be an unthinkably dangerous endeavor. Like the idea of crossing the unsettled country in a wagon train or crossing the ocean in a wooden sailboat seems to us now. And we tend to think of this as part of the human condition, right? As though we could go like trace this all the way back to the first Homo sapiens, but it only actually starts with a scientific revolution. Right, I like The word anachronism doesn't appear in the English language until the mid-17th century because until then, people didn't really have a sense of this linear advancement of technology that we take for granted now. Sure, new shit would crop up here and there back then, but so little advancement would take place over a human lifetime that it was almost imperceptible. That's why Shakespeare could get away with clocks striking three and Julius Caesar and Cleopatra playing billiards without anybody calling bullshit on him. But today, we define the decade we were born in by the level of technology we had at the time. Right? Throughout human history, we've tried out a hell of a lot of different worldviews. Most of them were religious, some of them were philosophical, and until we tried on science, all of them came to the same end in terms of technology. Right, Some of them might have been better or worse in terms of fairness, freedom, prosperity, and the like, but only one of them consistently made people's lives better over centuries. And sure, Christian apologists would dispute that. they try to pretend that their religious worldview has improved lives for 2,000 years and counting, but all it takes is a quick glance at the standard of living in ancient Rome and the standard of living in 12th century England to disabuse yourself of that bullshit. I'm sure Muslims say the same thing, but I can disprove that by looking at Iran and two points in the single human lifetime, right? So, but enamored as our culture is with this religious frame, Framework, we tend towards this belief that science can't give you anything without also taking something back, right? Like it has to be balanced out. We're conditioned to think that for every convenience we gain, there's something just as valuable that we lose. And that makes sense when you look at it from like the perspective of virtually every worldview that preceded science. Right? Like that's how almost all of them work throughout human history and up to the modern day. If you want Muhammad to give you the ticket to heaven, you can't jerk off now. If you want Jesus to forgive you, you have to obey your husband. If you want Buddha's enlightenment, then you can't wonder how you'd fare against a team of robot ninjas while you brush your teeth. Science does not have those requirements. 
You know, it prevents your polio, whether you believe in vaccines or not. It treats your cancer, whether you're pious or sinful. No amount of doubt can bring down an airplane, just like no amount of faith can lift one. But if our society just unabashedly and unapologetically admitted that science works, it would also have to acknowledge that religion doesn't. 